Um, you sent out a packet, right, Laura? I'm just trying to find it. Yeah, I can send it. That's fine. Sorry about that. I shouldn't. Okay, so. Yeah, I, I'm. We'll just start discussing items, and then if Bill's able to make it, that's great. I I got an email from him, and he's gonna try. So. Um, there it is. Oh, okay. This is the May 29th, 2020 complete street meeting. Um. You want to call it to order, everyone? Let everyone call it to order. Okay, so roll call. Um, Carla? Uh, here. Lauren? Hi. Here. Um, Paulina? Here. Ann Levy? Here. Tess? Here. And click. Here. Okay. And other people may join us. I'll keep an eye on my email and the sort of joining button as we're going along. Uh, I wasn't able to do the minutes of April 24th. Sorry about that, guys. I was going to try really hard to stay up late last night and do them, but I did not. That's. Uh, I'm glad you didn't stay up late. That's fine. <laughs> not a problem. Well, a lot of this we discussed last meeting, and it's been a whole month, so would have been. Anyway. Um, okay, so we have a new Celts Farm plan to look at, uh, quite a bit different from the last time we looked at it, and we also have a traffic study which is attached to a packet. So um, the Celts Farm developer went to the county, and he and the county was pretty adamant about only one curb cut onto River Road. Um, and so what they did, and if you guys want, I can share my screen, or you can have it up on your computer. Oops. Um, is they removed the connection to River Road that was closer to the bend, which obviously makes sense, and they and they kept the one that has the better sight lines down where it's straighter, across the way from Blackneck Park, and they cul-de-sac the one, and they did leave enough area at the end of the cul-de-sac to make an emergency road if need to be, if it ever needed to be made, um, and then they um, are still showing the connection to Windsor Drive, the planning board. Um, definitely wants to show the connection, whether or not it gets made or not. That's, they don't want it to be like not shown and then added last minute. They want to show it and then decide what to do about it, which we talked about before. Um, to summarize the traffic study, when it originally came with the two um, connections, it had uh, about, I think it was a little bit more than the 932 cars that are showing in the traffic study now. Um, so uh, re removing that one curb cut changed the number of cars just a little bit. Um, so you're saying a little bit more than the 932 cars that are showing in the traffic study now. Um, so uh, re removing that one curb cut changed the number of cars. Can you guys understand Carla? Oh, Something is happening. Oops. Okay, she left. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was almost my voice repeating over and over again, wasn't it? Okay. Spooky. Um, somehow in all of that, I deleted my packet. <laughs> um, and we... We did have our PDE town engineers look at the traffic study and they did feel that, you know, the traffic study was sound. They did want to see an evaluation of level of service for Windsor and, well, we're calling it Windsor, it probably has a different name, but for the Windsor connection and River Road, just to see how long it would like potentially take people who wanted to take a left onto River Road or something like that. Um, But uh, I don't know. Did you guys have any thoughts when you were reading it? What was the question? Did you guys have any thoughts or questions about the traffic oh, okay. when you were reading it? Um, it made sense to me. I just was curious, you know, how the people who live on Windsor Road are going to react if they know that there's going to be an increase in 
600 cars on their street or 900 cars on their street, but knowing you know, how the people of the Del Mar reacted, well, it, has this already been made public or not? Yes, it has, yes. The original one we talked about, I think had just slightly higher cars, I, but I mean, I, Clark, you can jump in here. I think it's only a difference of like 12 cars or something. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think it's too, too What What's the chance of putting in the road, the connection? Like in terms of, I mean, weighing, it's basically weighing the, the residents' concerns over the uh, um, the time spent, like the time you save for commuting, is that sort of? So um, it, there's a lot um, of residents that actually email us in favor of the connection, but obviously, I mean, I think it makes sense that most of the people who live on Windsor Drive are not in favor. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I would, Okay. I, I do get, you know, I even got one yesterday of someone who lives in the neighborhood um, because it would potentially remove cars on other streets in the neighborhood, right? Because it's, right now you already have vehicles that are kind of winding their way through the neighborhoods. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. So, I mean, and then obviously like even like it's a benefit to people who live in um, like Old Niskayuna because right. it's a direct connection from uh, our town center overlay district to, to Blatnick Park. So, I mean, for residential traffic, it does, I think benef it does benefit a, a large portion of the town. And there's definitely, you know, good planning says you want that connectivity and street circulation. And, um, you know, as a transportation objective, it certainly, it certainly makes sense to make the connection, but there, you know, yeah. there's an undeniable impact to the people who live on Windsor Road. So that's what the balance is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Um, so I think that we have typically at least weighed in or helped the planning board decide from a complete streets perspective, you know, what we'd like to see over there. My recollection, and I apologize because not being able to do the minutes, I also wasn't able to listen to our last meeting. But I think that we were still recommend. I mean, there's no question we're recommending the um, bike path connection. There's nobody in the world that, well, there might be a couple people, but generally speaking, I think you've got probably like 95% of people on board with the uh, um, bike connection. So it's, I guess the question, if we wanna look at complete streets is perspective weighing all modes of transportation, including vehicles, into the equation if we think that it makes sense and we would also want to recommend to the planning board, or if we read the traffic study and we want to think about it more, <laughs> or there's other things that we think should be considered or questions that we would like to see answered. Those are all the things that we could talk about at, for it being on the agenda. Well, maybe you said this when, um when the audio was a little garbled, but it's gonna go down to a single entrance. Is that entrance gonna have that kind of boulevard um, beginning part to it where it meets up with the road or is it gonna stay kind of the way it was? It was um, I don't think this one has the entrance. I can share my screen with you guys. I'm having, um, this is the first time I have done Google Meets on two screens. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to my office. I can go to my office today. And I'm like, whoa, sorry about that. If you just mind, if I can, I'll it is difficult. Right? Anymore, it's the first time it's we uh, Google and trying to keep it all straight of how to do this, huh? Yeah. Is this is the first time. This is the first time it's been really slow, too. It's really slow. Right I think that may just be the internet, but it could be because I'm running it from my office. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I imagine I emailed Bill. I mean, he's got to be trying. He loves complete streets meetings. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, pull this up. Oh, 
Okay, so it's so the same get... as before. There it is. Well, here, I'll sh let me just show that you here for... Oops. Okay, so can you guys see my mouse? It's This used to come down like here. Maybe I can draw on this. I remember the last time I was drawing on it, it didn't really go well. <laughs> Wait. Right here used to come down, and there was a boulevard here. Mm -hmm. um, he's leaving enough space that you could put an emergency connection here, but um, the only real traffic uh, vehicle connection would be down here. Is this in response to the county to go to one um, entry point? Or yeah, directly in response. The county, I think, was pretty strong in that it only wanted to see one curb cut there. OK. Um, the, I, we don't worry as much about the two single family homes over here. It's really just, we had talked about this before. This was not the greatest sight lines and they were talking about um, actually removing dirt and earth to get the sight lines down to something that was good. And over here is where they had the boulevard. Um, but I mean, Jim, if you think it's a good traffic calming neighborhood entrance thing to do, I'm sure he could still fit it. Um. I mean, yeah, I, I think generally it can be. Um, you know, it, it sounds like he's gone through quite a few changes on this. Um, I think it would make it your way into the development, too. It would make it look a little more um, residential than maybe as a, as a cut, per se. Um, yeah, just that short boulevard that he had there before, right? That has kind of the yeah. sort of way. Yeah, because the one thing it can do, you know, especially if, if people are talking about the concerns about speeds or something, is it would slow down people turning onto the road from River Road instead of making a really wide sweep where they might, you know, kind of head out into the oncoming. Um, it would it would force people to slow down turning there, which which they should be doing. They shouldn't be making a wide, fast sweep down to the road. Um, so that could be utilized as a, as a bit of a traffic calming enhancement, I think, for sure. I'm sorry, Jim, what are you proposing? I didn't follow. Uh, the the original plan had a little kind of like a boulevard strip and all just a small kind of oh. grass strip area okay. uh, to separate out the two lanes of. of um, I was just curious if you proposed yeah. on the new plan or not, and I get it. it would it would allow it would force people to slow down a little, and not be able to take kind of like a really wide, you know, fast turn where they might go into the oncoming lane to to make that turn. Um. I think if I can zoom in here, I believe they proposed at one point a stop sign here. Doesn't seem to be labeled anymore, but um, a stop sign here and here so that people are coming in either direction would stop. To also slow people down. You have connection, you have a crossing of the multi use path here. Which the one advantage to actually cul de sacing this is that this is a much safer crossing now. <laughs> and then they wrapped it around here and then they're crossing here. And we talked about before, like this entrance is going to be tightened up a little bit and then moving from here. So they're still p proposing to move the this uh, skewed one and tighten it up and put it here. They had. Um, Originally, I don't know if you guys even saw the one where they were putting it between the two streets. So, uh, Creed Manning felt like it would be beneficial to separate out the pedestrian traffic with the vehicle traffic, but the county really wanted it to be at one point so that everybody was watching for everybody else. Um, yeah. So, so Laura, the, um, the email that we got about the repaving job on the trail, I don't know if mm -hmm. you saw my email I sent you. They're proposing to repave the existing trail kind of by the ball fields and then as it runs up to the side of the road there, I forget the road, um, past Kelts Farm. Oh, Riverdale? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I, obviously, I think we want to see that that repaved, but I was wondering if they were looking at redoing the striping as well and if, if that's going to create any issues with the county in the future in terms of this, you know, three-line intersection for pedestrian crossing. But I'm guessing if they've seen this plan and what they're doing with the improvements, we're probably okay. I just don't want to see that angle crosswalk put in and then come back and say, well, we don't need to do this other one. I think it's yeah, fun. the paving project is only going to pave the asphalt. That's Newcastle. And I don't, there's, there isn't a uh, restriping of the existing crosswalk or changing it at all in their contract right now. 
Okay. That grant that they released does talk about fixing that crosswalk because um, that grant was awarded before this development went right. through. So it's actually written into the grant to fix that crosswalk. Obviously, if the if this plan progresses far enough that the town is comfortable that the crosswalk is going to be addressed for safety, um, we would probably take that funding and then, um, you know, with the permission of New York State, reallocate it to potentially another crosswalk that we need to do. <laughs> but right now, just in case, you know, this whole thing blows up, it that crosswalk, because of its angle, really does need, you know, some love, but it's not as, it's not, Part of the repaving, they're just going to. They're just an asphalt company that's laying down new asphalt. Okay. Yeah. And the only other question I had, and I'm not sure, you know, how things in the past. We can look at having that that new section of trail and the crosswalk put in in an early part of the development phase versus all the way at the end. I mean, certainly we have consideration going in and repaving. How they're going to do that, but I'd like to see that going earlier rather than later. If that's something that can be can be requested, and just get that whole thing realigned sooner, you know, soon as possible. Yes, I think we even talked about that last time. But yeah, that should be a direct uh, recommendation to the planning board. So I've got uh, Consider Boulevard at the entrance and River Road. Um, traffic coming, and then um, have the crosswalk put in earlier in. Of construction phase than later. <laughs> they can write that right into their approval if they're going to do it. Yeah, if that's something that's been done with, at least yeah. that, and then the rest of it through the development will go on as you know as needed. But um, that's kind of an important crossing, and that angle crossing isn't a great one. So that'd be great if we could do that. Yeah. So. So I know the location of the bike path changes, but there's no question that it's going to be included, I think. Hi, Dart. Um, and I know that our, we're complete streets and we're supposed to consider traffic, but we don't often look at, um, the cars were more like, <laughs> I mean, we do look at cars, but I think we try more because right now the, the scales are so tipped to cars that we try much harder to push the bicycle and pedestrian and transit. But um, this is, I think, the main table for the traffic. Um, and I think over here is where they consider to be, um, whoops. They consider 90% um, of traffic diverted from going north to the traffic circle and then back down to the Van Antwerp Windsor Drive intersection. They're they're um, they're just saying that anybody who would be taking that particular movement, like north of the circle down to the Van Antwerp, the current Van Antwerp Windsor Drive four-way stop, 90% of them would probably take this diversion. Um, take this route instead of going north and then back down again. Um, but they did put other thresholds that show, uh, you know, different levels of traffic there because I think the planning board felt like a 90% diversion was pretty high. So they wanted to see what the other diversions would look like. Laura, I'm yeah. not opposed to the um, car connectivity too, but then for people that wanted to walk and cycle and take that access road, um, would like a typical route then then get marked for them along the roads that because if you know a lot of cars were coming then it makes it less comfortable for cyclists and pedestrians in that neighborhood who are going to the same location. So the bike path right now goes the whole way down Windsor. Okay. Um, and it actually even crosses Main Antwerp and then continues down right to the town center overlay district. Okay. Yeah, you'd be so, able to get all the way to Pole Town Road on a on a separated path. It's separated okay. path. Yeah. Good. Um, I mean, like for people who are crossing, like from Brittany or, um, like Fox Hollow. Maybe if we're considering traffic coming on Windsor Dr Drive, like we make like nicer crossings or something like that, because right now. They're just crossing wide open pavement. I mean, it's typical, of, you know, most internal neighborhoods in the town of Miskiuna. But 
but anybody who's on the bike path has a sort of a clear shot from Gladden Park all the way to to um, Ball Town Road. But um, pe people would still people who are on the south side still have to cross Windsor to get over to the bike path, obviously. Um, I see no issues, you know, living in the, the neighborhood and walking and biking down that way a lot. I just can't wait to have it a little bit more um, clear as to how to get to the bike path. And, you know, I think complete streets means you're, you're, you're taking the existing traffic and you're uh, using all your, your streets. So I'm, I'm in favor of a road connection as well, and, uh, especially along Windsor where you already have a separated path. If there's ever a place where you be okay with uh, having a little bit more traffic is one where the pedestrians and bicyclists are already uh, not on the road. So I know um, we probably would still get another chance to look at this um, and I did get you guys your packets out late. Like, do you want to make a formal recommendation on the road, or do you want to still um, just pay attention to the way the project's changing um, and, you know, stick with the, the smaller kind of recommendations now? Kind of up to you guys. Hey, Laura, I'm sorry for hopping in late. I was in another meeting. It's fine. But the um, plot plan that you just showed is that the latest plan with the um, cul-de-sac yeah because the county limited the developer to one entrance on the river road okay and then the traffic the traffic study that was there that's the amount of traffic that would go through um, that cut through yeah yeah that's their estimate um, for the number of vehicles so they so they use like GPSs in people's cars, and they um, they could figure out when people were going when they were going like north on River Road, and then through the GE Research Traffic Circle, and then down to the Windsor Drive Van Antwerp intersection. So that they were see they were watching people's like GPS hit particular intersections. I guess this is just the way the guy explained it, and I could be a little bit wrong, but. Um, and so then they took that number of cars and then took a percentage of the diversion of those people's cars. And that's where they're coming up with those numbers. I know the um, public and the planning board had questions about further intersections. Like for instance, if somebody was coming up River Road and wanted to go to like Ellis or some of the other places, like they would typically go probably like to the uh, River Baltown Road intersection and then continue down Providence. Uh, and they were wondering how many people that would divert, but the traffic engineers were showing that the majority of cars that would be coming from like the eastern side of Nismuna and going to like Ellis or the casino or anything would take Route 7. So the only people that would be generated to make that trip that would take Providence are kind of north of where it doesn't make sense to go down to Route 7 anymore. And that's a pretty small number of houses. Uh, they're, you know, they're basically on the one side of River Road in right. that general area, and they're kind of north. So there's just not a lot of traffic in that area that generates that would take Providence to Ellis. Um, the majority of cars are probably going to take Route Seven. Did they talk about Lamplighter Road and how many people actually use that to avoid the circle? They, that's something the planning board had brought up because they were wondering if it's possible to look at the number of cars that. Um, currently kind of, you know, cut through the neighborhoods with Fox Hollow, Chestnut, and um, Lake Lamplighter. Um, I don't think that's really in there. I can pull it up again here. It, Laura, Bill just called me and said he's trying to get in. I don't know okay, I don't know if he would be. I don't know if he's in a waiting room. He can see us all, but he can't talk. So I don't know if he... Mm, okay. Okay. Um, if you can you if you guys just want to discuss a little bit, let me just see if I can get him in.
So you're talking about lamplighter? Yeah. I think that's, that come, I think that's the road. Um, does that come off one, Rosendale? So it goes off Windsor and there's several feeder streets and it sort of wraps around and it does like a U, but it does come out between the two entrances at Knowles. I, I believe I can pull it up on my computer. and. Um, yeah, I'm, not, I'm on Google Maps trying to find it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. There it is. Yeah. It is harder to cut through there because of all the turns and, and everything. It's like not a straight through from, from Windsor to um, uh, River yeah. Road. No, I agree with you, Tess, on that. It is not the same. It is more arduous to go that way. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I think I've said before, you know, back in the day when I was commuting into Latham, I'd actually go down Windsor and then down, what is that? I guess it's Briar Ridge and Chestnut Lane, which is just past the ball fields um, yeah. where the trail ends there. And, and I know, you know, when I was doing it, there were always a number of cars that would take that as a cut through. Mm -hmm. um, that's already, you know, that's already occurring. Um, yeah, I don't know how many other way, but I do, I do think you'd have to you'd have to know your way around a little bit over to, to lamp later. I'm sure people do it. Yeah, I I just base it on, you know, again, you know, my experience, I drive that all the time, and if I'm going down Van Antwerp and I hit Windsor, the amount of road between um, Windsor and River Road before you get to the circle is so small. And then that circle is so easy. And once you get on River Road, you can go so much faster. I, I think people really um, will drive the least, you know, the least resistance. And I just think that seems to be a lot less resistance than going through a neighborhood and making, you know, left-hand turn. And now that's a right-hand turn going around the circle and then going out, trying to get out on River Road, particularly during rush hour because there's a lot of traffic. Yeah, I think it depends on where you're headed. Like, did you look at the traffic study report that, like, some people are going 100 miles per hour on River Road? I mean, there weren't that many of them. I think it was, like, in the 5 to 10 range. But, you know, if you're headed far away, you're taking River Road and you're going fast. But if you're headed to Old Nisbeuna, I would cut through Windsor. I would avoid River Road. You know, I think it's... Depends on where you're headed. I'm not sure I would take lamp lighter because I would for sure get lost going through all those little. Things. I would take Windsor if that cut through existed. I'm not saying that. I, I would too. Yeah. If you were coming up the road during rush hour, that would be between um, four and six. There is so much traffic going um, east eastbound on the river and westbound on river i don't think you would make that left hand turn because you would be sitting waiting to make that turn and i think it'd be easier to go up to the circle after everything was said and done i mean during non-rush hours i could see people cutting through there i certainly could but I mean, one, one option you can you know, I don't know, again, it's, it'd be something new, but, you know, with the county, since it is a county road, to see if we could put up some uh, wayfinding type signage so that maybe something that's before you get to this new intersection that says, you know, Ellis Hospital and, and Schenectady straight ahead and, you know, I to the left so that anyone that didn't really know where they were going would continue on River Road versus cutting through, um, you know, on not. Yeah, and actually, it's, that it's was such a Kind of make it like a you know like a business route and then the main route as you kind of see when you go through some of these old small small towns they have a business route that's kind of off to the side and then the main right. track route that they try and keep you on like something town about center it. it'll say town center or something like that yeah, yeah right. that would that would make sense you put up a sign that says local traffic only um, i feel like the traffic study says there's just not that much traffic i feel like we're really you know trying to solve a problem that just won't be there i actually feel that people on briar Creek not it's just going to uh, further dilute the traffic we already have on residential street. Yeah, we. Um, I mean, I think that 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 is definitely a point of view that has come up. Um, but we have recommended um, 
weight limit, weight restriction, so that there isn't any uh, truck traffic that would go down Windsor. Obviously, not necessary. And then, um, yeah, I, I can mean, hear Laura. Truck traffic. Hey, is that you, Bill? Hey, Bill. Yeah, I'm on the phone. Uh, my my link on the computer is not there, so I'll just have to join uh, on the phone and uh, chip in this way, which I'm happy to do. Great. My Hi, phone's problems this morning. <laughs> yeah. um, but my thoughts, well, kind of on connecting. Um, uh, I know when we looked at uh, Oakmont and we had the uh, one-way road over there, so folks at Hexham Gardens could go south through Oakmont to get out to Console Road, but the folks in Oakmont couldn't go the other way and. Uh, but people drove illegally one way, going the other way. And uh, after a while, the town board just changed it back to a two-way road. And uh, people over there felt like, gee, we pay taxes. We're part of the town. We should be able to drive on this. And I guess I was just wondering, um, would folks in the Kelts estate, would they be uh, imprisoned just on uh, being able to get out only on River Road, either a a left or a right out there and that they wouldn't be able to take a back way uh, to get out. And uh, for that reason, it would make sense to, uh, to connect. And I know the traffic study uh, does say it's about it's going to be a 25% increase. Um, and I don't know whether, is it fair to say, gee, if you look at the town map, this road runs, it's kind of one parcel short of connecting to River Road, which real estate agents probably don't show people when they buy their homes, but um, it, it's there. Um, so it's, and it's a hard decision, which will be a hard decision for the planning board because they do see, uh, it's kind of a, as the traffic study says, kind of a collector road. It's bigger, it's not just like a small street, it's got width and will be a collector road. Um, but I mean, I, and I, I don't want to say it's going to be a yawn because it's probably that 25%, uh, that's predicted in traffic study. And then once the middle school arrangement gets changed, then you're going to have folks over there that will be driving to take their fifth and sixth graders to Van Antwerp or Hillside, wherever they put fifth and sixth grade. And then you'll have people in old Miskuna driving to take seventh and eighth graders. I mean, not everybody will take the bus. And uh, it's also the case that some people that may drop their uh, child at school may go to work, but they may, you know, come back the other way. And um, I mean, listening to Dart's point, I do think that um, there will be some folks that will say, look, going, even if you went on not street East, and then you took a left on Van Antwerp and went up to the circle uh, you've got the circle to make the right turn, and then you go down to the turnaround at River and Rosendale, and you go through that, and then up to the school. It will be a pretty fast trip, and uh, even if there's some stop signs getting into the Celts property, people may still go that way. But um, I mean, I I don't know what other people think on recommending a connection to the planning board, but I'm guessing the town board has their ears open to say, well, what is the Conservation Advisory Council going to say? What is Complete Streets going to say? What is the Planning Board going to say in terms of making their decision? And um, um, I mean, there will be some more traffic, but I mean, my uh, I've changed my view on this a little bit. I think I would be supportive of making the connection with some traffic calming on Windsor. That, that's exactly what I was going to say, Bill. I think I, I support the connection. Um, it's been in the plan, but I would definitely like to see um, some complete or um, some, uh, yeah, some complete street traffic elements on Windsor to help comment a little bit what those are. Would determine. Yeah, I tend to agree with both of you. I think the connection is extremely important for the overall town development and growth. I recognize that there could be more traffic on Windsor. Um, but I, I, I think the overall impact is going to be small um, over the long run. And I would support traffic calming um, measures on Windsor. I think that would go a long way. 
I agree, and I just I take a note of the um, the uh, speed uh, sign that you put up on Windsor, and that um, when I'm going 33 miles per hour, which feels very fast, just on the way that the, the uh, road is already designed, that going when you know when I think cars are going very fast, they are actually probably going close to the speed limit there. So um, I don't. I think that the perceived speeding problem might just be. Uh, because cars go so slow in some of the other residential streets. Um, but I'm, I'm fully supportive of making the connection. I agree with all of you. Especially if I have to schlep Natalie, my daughter across town now to go to school. So, Well, yeah, I know we've talked about the school a lot, but that still has to go to the community for a vote. Yes, true. So that'll be really interesting. With me and Tess picketing all over town, hopefully no one will vote for it. <laughs> no matter um, what happens with that vote, though, I, I still think that, and we've talked about this, we just need to keep pushing for them to put bonding more for their um, for their bicycle and pedestrian amenities and actually just start to be more open as a school system to bicycling and Yes. I, think, I don't want to go down the, the rabbit hole on this, but I think given where we are now with it and everything we're seeing about bikes being you know, overwhelmed with requests for purchases of new bicycles, I think it is going to change the mentality, at least for the next couple of years. I don't know if that will directly impact this whole school change by the time it's done, if, if it passes, but uh, I think it has changed people's attitudes about getting on a bike and riding and finding out it's easier to get places than they originally thought. I mean, I'm riding to my bank down on Union Street now where I never really used to do that before. Um, I can't, and partially because there are more or less cars. But um, yeah, well, that's something else we can get into. But I do think that people's attitudes toward biking and walking have changed a lot in the last two months. They're certainly more aware that good people are out. Yeah, and if, and if, and if somehow the Complete Streets Committee can change the world, um, and we can actually just get more people out of their cars and on their bicycles and and walking. I mean, I just think it's very interesting. Like if you read the articles and stuff in the in you know New York Times or whatever you like to read, like all the lack of air pollution that's been happening because everybody's been walking and biking or not driving to work and staying home. It's alarm. It's alarming. I mean, it has to be raising just I don't know. It has to be eye opening for people. I was like, okay, we can do it. Like, let's get on our bicycles. Let's not, let's not drive. Anyway, okay. I drove to it, though. Full disclosure, so. Come on, Laura. I really do know. <laughs> Letting us down, Laura. <laughs> I want to get, I want to get an electric bike. Anyway, okay. So. We have two of them. You should definitely get one, so. Yeah. My mom that's has all, one. Yep, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. things, too, I believe. I think e-bikes are going to make it easier for people to get around. Certainly, a town like Niskayuna that's relatively far, except, of course, where you live, Laura. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm a baby. I have a really big hill that I do not like going up. <laughs> um, okay. So, so uh, should we, Laura, before we leave the Kelch property, I mean, uh, should we take a vote on a recommendation uh, while everyone's here? I mean, I don't know if there's any nays out there, but, or, I mean, do, you, do we want to wait for another meeting or our minds seem to be set? And I'm just wondering if you want us to vote and make a recommendation at this point. Yeah, I definitely think the planning board is looking to you guys for a recommendation. I guess the question that I just have for you, because I want to make sure that you, you know, feel comfortable with the data that you're given, you know, enough to make a full recommendation. We have been looking at this for several um, months and if a change does come, I can bring it back to you, you know, for further refinement of the recommendation. But I mean, if you are ready, I do think a recommendation would be help helpful. Okay. Well, personally, I've only had a chance to read the traffic study just, you know, in the last couple of days, but I mean, if everybody is aware that, you know, 25% increase, maybe more, but, um, um, well, I'll defer to some other comments on this. But. I, I feel for the people on, on Windsor Drive, though. Are, are there, like, property values going down and such or with, with that kind of, um, with this through street? And, I mean, I've heard from some people over there, too. And, and um, I mean, they mentioned that, you know, they went, they went and checked 
with the town hall when they bought their property and and they said that you know there would never be any road built and um I, it's i mean I, I i guess i know you're looking at the whole town and and how it benefits the whole town and i've only read i've only heard like i think i listened to uh the town board meeting where they read all the letters uh, uh, from the residents of Windsor Drive. So I, I got one perspective. Um, but um, is that, um, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just, and there's, there is something in the traffic port report that said, you know, it, it may, ch it's going to change the status of the street probably. Um, and, um, and the character of the street. And, and when that, does impinge on like you know the current residents is that fair or whatever but i um i do understand as, as a connection to um old niskiuna and bringing that closer to you know a, a more direct route to the park and uh, and how, how many letters of support did you get from um like the town that like people in the town for the road um, I don't have the exact count. Um, I can think of five or six, you know, as compared to probably 30 of the people on Windsor Drive who aren't in favor. Um, there is something in the planning world that's called the silent majority, though, because typically people who are, who are happy or indifferent to a plan don't take the time to say that they're fine with it. Um, yeah. You pretty much are yeah. going to hear from the people who are directly impacted, which makes sense. So, I mean, um, Windsor Drive is very vocal, and they should be because it's their properties, and they do need to be making sure that everything's done, you know, with the appropriate amount of understanding of what the impacts are going to be, and if there should be mitigation, and if you know the impacts outweigh the need for a connection, and all all of those conversations definitely do need to happen. There's no question about yeah. that. Yeah, um, I. But, yeah, I mean, I would just like. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say. I mean, I think I've I've gotten five or six letters in favor, and I've had people, a couple people, just randomly be like, "Oh, I, I would like a Windsor Drive connection to me." But the majority of the comments are definitely again. Yeah, I yeah, I would like to address though the comment that people checked with the town hall, and the town was saying that it wouldn't go through. As a member of the 2003 and the 2013 master plans, and participating in both those, I mean. For the last 20 years, I can say with, you know, absolute positively positive that that was going to go through. That was always the plan. It was town policy to connect that street. And even when the developer originally put it in, the whole discussion was centered making that connection to the town. So, you know, I, I, I am kind of concerned that the town is giving a message that's different than the policy, but that policy has been in basically in the town for a long time and the only reason why that um, cut through wasn't put in was there was a wetland issue that joel decided to take on and you know, other developers didn't want to take that on um you know as far as property values um in our neighborhood when they put in hummingbird um estates i live on morgan avenue so if you cut down morgan and then go up village and go down um Hummingbird, um, the development there to console, you cut out all that traffic light and all the turnaround up by the uh, Nisky Unit Country Club and that whole entire mess. And when they put that in, we were really concerned as a neighborhood it was going to increase our traffic. And, you know, we made the same arguments. It was going to hurt our property values and stuff like that. And in reality, the traffic did go up a little bit but there was an added convenience for the people who lived on Morgan because we can get to Hannaford's a lot easier and I'll be honest with you, if you went around the neighborhood right now and asked people all along that path whether the traffic had increased or adversely impacted their property values, people would say, no, they don't even know what you're really um, talking about. And I think there's also studies that if you have access to a park, it actually improves your property values as well. So, you know, I. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Huh. So I think it's hard. It's hard to say that, you know, which way it's going to go. I guess that's what I'm saying. Hmm. What if we also recommended that a speed bump or something be in the road for the con the driving connection? That's what I was thinking. Okay. Um, 
the winter time. You make the recommendation that it goes through traffic calming measures. Do you have to say what the traffic calming measures are now, or do you just make that sort of general statement of traffic calming measures? I would probably recommend that you would just say traffic calming measures because um, the people on Windsor Drive didn't like the boulevard idea when we were brainstorming, which, you know, I liked it a lot. I still tell them that I liked it a lot, um, but it, they definitely did not like that. So I think that it probably would be, it would be, I think, in order to do it right, you know, actually have an engineer or traffic somebody look at Windsor Drive and figure out what is going to be the most effective, you know, somebody um, somebody who has a little more experience doing that. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, to, to move forward, it sounds like we're all in favor of it with just the specific rec recommendations of traffic calming on Windsor and um, moving the connection to the bike trail to be opposite the, the entrance to the new development. Yes. Yep. Okay. I think you can put something in the recommendation that, in understanding that connectivity and access to parks is uh, very desired among uh, homeowners and/or purchasers. I mean, it really is something we're doing that will make this unit and this neighborhood more attractive. Definitely. Just for everyone on the call, there there are studies out there that show that connectivity to parks. Of property values overall. I mean, there's a trade off here with you know the traffic and everything, but that generally helps with property values and incre increasing those. Hmm. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I mean, that entrance to the Blatnick Park right now is kind of sad because you know it had our water and sewer garage, but that's being taken down. Like we're plant, we're going to be planting, you know, special trees over there, um, landscaping a new. Uh, parking lot, um, greening up the transfer station. So you won't have that old building sitting there. Like I think you'll have a much nicer park entrance there. Um, oh, that's great. Awesome. Yeah, the tennis nets going up anytime soon? And the what? The tennis nets going up anytime soon or did they go up? Uh, I don't know about that. I'm not that's sure. It's an improved activity. Just it is. Now hopefully we can get some pickleball courts over there. there. <laughs> What's that? I said, if only we could get some pickleball courts over there. That would be nice. Yeah, more amenities there would be fantastic. Well, yeah. tether, I always thought tether ball would be good. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're adding more fixtures to the splash pad too because they wound up with some. They bonded for that specifically, so you still have to spend the money on the splash pad. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. We can't, use it. we can't use it right now, but the splash pad I think is going to become a bigger draw once people learn that it's there. Um, I mean, it's there, but it's, it, you know, I don't think people really even know it's there yet uh, to a large well, degree. You know, it's a lot of difference between, you know, I, I'm, we've already, my wife and I have talked about how great of like a midpoint that is on our, you know, daily walk to stop there, let the kids play and then get back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have, uh, do we still want to include, just take a look at the boulevard at the entrance from River Road for traffic calming. I mean, anything we can do to discourage and slow down cars, right? So that it's really just a neighborhood connection. Um, yeah. Walk, walk put in earlier in the construction phasing than later. I mean, we talked about this just briefly, like we could put truck traffic and or local traffic only signs, then traffic calming on Windsor. And then just as a point that connectivity and access to parks is um, very desirable to homeowners and future purchases, purchasers. Yeah. Mm. Sounds great. Uh, Sounds good. I, I think our memo ought to say, though, that we do understand from the traffic study that it's saying that there will be, you know, an increase in traffic. So it's not like we're ignoring that, that we're aware that the traffic study says, you know, uh, there will be probably a 25 percent increase in cars uh, on the road making a connection. So it's not like we're dodging that or not pretending it's not there okay the traffic calming oh. measures, right yeah so that relates to the traffic calming measures and the and boulevards and things like that yeah so maybe we put that at the beginning okay that we can um, the traffic calming there. is it possible that a chicane right down at the end like by briar ridge i mean we talk about it but we've never used one anywhere i mean is this something that could be considered i mean if we 
tried it on a street and it and it was effective, it would be an example we could use elsewhere, like on Dean Street and some other places. But you know. I think it could build, but I agree with Laura. I think the recommendation from us right now should probably be more general and that we should look into complete yeah. streets elements. And then when those do come forward, I would hope that we'd be able to get a look at them and actually comment on you know the proposals and the okay. ideas. Or, sure. Uh, but I, right now, if we can just get people to agree that they will consider it and look at it as part of the overall you know improvement package, I think that that would be a good step okay. forward. Okay. Well, uh, why don't we um, take a vote? I mean, I don't mind being shy to, you know, offer a recommendation that we recommend to the planning board, the, the connection with the other provisions. And, you know, uh, let's just get a vote from the committee. If there's a second out there, uh, then we'll, we'll move along. I second. <laughs> Is there a second? I second. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Good. Um, I, if, all opposed, or if there are any nays, and Carla, if you're uh, troubled by this and you want to stand with the folks on the on, on Windsor Drive and vote no, I mean that's no votes are perfectly fine. So uh, if there's any any nos, speak up, and we'll include them in the minutes. Okay. Um. I mean, I, I think everyone had good points about connecting the whole, I mean, in terms of connecting old Miskiuna that to that park and, and like, you know, a whole part of the town that wouldn't be um, very easily. And I, I mean, I think, I mean, there is a lot of good in that. So I, I, I guess I, I would probably vote yes for that then. So. Okay. Okay, anyone else um, that's not a yes? Okay. Uh, sounds we're, we're unanimous, Laura, with the folks that are on the meeting here. So we can, we can record that and move on to the next item. Got it. Thanks, guys. I know that's a tough one, and I appreciate it that you're so thoughtful about it. Okay. So the next one we have is just super short. Um, 2220 Crescent Ave, we looked at this last time, and since we looked at it, um, the engineer came back with two drawings. And we had, the print board had talked to him about putting like one parking spot. I'll show my screen with you guys, hold on. I'm just getting it up here. One parking spot on Crescent Ave that would service the handicap requirement for a business in the new apartment building. Uh, it was not new, in the existing apartment building. And we still needed to talk to the highway department about that, that but then, so both of these drawings, here we go, hold on. So I'm slightly confused, Laura, about the parking. It, it looks like there's six spots that are in the alley back there that were shown on the plans that we looked at. Yes, but then, here. you yeah. know, the planning board and other, they're talking about no over on Crescent itself, now we're talking uh, about having some here. parking yeah. spot there. So, uh, I mean, uh, is there any update on that on where, and they may be proposing them from both, I don't know, but where exactly would new parking spots go to serve the buildings on Cre Crescent Road? Oh, overall, that's actually our next bullet point, um, is that, you know, we have... Um, it's time for the town to go out to um, to engineering and take a look at the, the whole corridor, take a look at the area as a whole and see what we can do about parking and mitigation of traffic and making the, interne in, in, in the intersection safer and stuff like that. Um, that's one of the reasons why um, the planning board, I think, was saying, why don't you just put an on-street parking space for now that's designated as handicapped in front of this building? And that would give the town time to figure out you know, if we want to see more parking on Crescent or if that's, it's just not going to make sense right now. Um, I can't remember if we talked about this before, but I think that the reason that there's no parking signs on Crescent Ave for certain hours is because it used to fill up with um, high schoolers um, parking for the high school. So I don't know, there just has to be some consideration of proximity and, you know, what, you know, we're trying to make parking for the co-op, but is it actually just going to serve as additional parking for the high school, <laughs> those kind of questions. Certainly, like, even if it was, you know, park, a lot of high schoolers were parking there, it would still service the apartment buildings in the evening. 
but I think part of the reason that we'd be looking at adding parking to that corridor would be to help, you know, to help with some of the additional, you know, stores. In the can, I, no. can I ask you a question about that? I, yeah. I don't see any sidewalk or maybe it's just the existing as asphalt in front of all those parking spots there to connect them yeah. to not street. Am I missing something? These ones? Oh, are you on the not street drying? Yeah, should I not be? Sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, so I guess just really quickly, I mean, do you, would you guys care if a, a handicapped parking space was designated on Crescent Ave in the interim um, while we're examining the whole corridor? I guess that's the only reason about that fact. It's a little bit different than the last one said. Are, are you talking about parallel uh, on street or are you yeah. talking about now? Well, planning board was talking about parallel. This one is actually drawn um, as a pull-off, but I don't think that the planning board wants to see that because it's all yard. Uh, and I don't think that they want to see them built until we have a corridor-wide plan. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, part of my, my whole thing is that on-street parking does help with traffic calming. And I know there are complaints about cut through on Crescent to try and avoid the light at Balltown and not. Um, you know, I don't know that putting that spot in would necessarily have the ability to do on street parking, but certainly um, make it a little tougher to engineer because you'd have to provide the visibility space on either side. So you wouldn't be able to have on street parking in a certain distance of that. But um, oh, I, I probably prefer to maybe see that provided as, you know, a future option that could be put in. If the study is done and it's determined that that's necessary. So you could maybe stay on the plans as, as an option to be done and jump with the study. Okay. That's just mine. So just to summarize, your preference would be on street parking. Um, and then if you know something happened in the future, we could look at Yeah, and from a again from a you know, I know some people park on street now, not a lot, but there are a number of people that do for the thing for the apartments. Um, I, I prefer to look at that for on street parking for traffic common purposes. Um, and to provide more more protection parking than just the one spot. But I can see where they're but I, I again I'd like to see that done in conjunction with the study. Uh, if it's done in advance, it might just make the study a little tougher for that section of road. But it also, you know, it's kind of timing too, how long the study might take. Um, Laura, I uh, did the town board decide to table the study like on Crescent and uh, Via Del Mar and Clifton Park Road to open it up to other engineering companies to submit an RFP or, I mean, I, I know there's a news clip on it, but I, uh, if there's any update you have on that, or whether the mission of the work will change or whether the town board just was let's uh, open it up to other companies and maybe get a fresh set of eyes to look at this um, yeah no the mission doesn't change and that's why i have that mj assessment for you guys to understand like they are just going out for more quotes um you know just to see if there you know is a cost savings and just to see if we can get a fresh set of eyes um but the things they're looking at would be the same um which would be, I mean, um, traffic deterrents are calming on Via Del Mar, looking at the intersection of Clifton Road and Crescent Road, you know, to connect that down. We've talked about all these things. Um, and, okay. then still, and then maybe uh, off street or angled parking on Crescent, or maybe just figuring out how to do better on street parking, like maybe striped on street parking, like all of those things, just looking at the corridor as a whole for for traffic and then and i think we talked about this at town board meeting but it's not just via del mar they're looking at via del mar Armelia, almeria clifton park crescent and the alley behind the co-op yeah i do think jim levy has a good point about those four spots that are on the county's plan that are next to lang's pharmacy that they kind of are angled towards nut street but you know, you'd have cars trying to get in them, cutting across. I mean, they might not make a firm left turn to get in, but they'd be gliding across Clifton Park Road to get into those spots, unless the pharmacy guy just had them all filled with his 
his employees or his vans or something, but that does create a, a conflict with cars turning from not onto Clifton Park Road and, you know, maybe facing other motorists coming head on that are trying to get into those spots. And so, and then backing out might be awkward and those four spots seem to conflict with other parking spots that would be up against the, the pharmacy building itself. So um, I do think looking at the parking configuration over there uh, as well with the traffic movement would be a very useful thing to do. And then um, kind of squaring up Crescent as it approaches Clifton Park Road. And there might be a couple trees at that triangle that sticks out at Clifton Park Road that would make visibility better and would just square it up so that uh, people turning from Clifton Park onto Crescent know they're making a right turn onto a street and people coming from Crescent onto Clifton Park Road would basically have to square up with Clifton Park Road and either make a left or a right turn there, which I think would be a good idea. So that's that's good and yeah. would be an important part of the next study. Like Jim, were you saying to like take these parking spaces or not, but maybe just look at taking these parking spaces and flipping them so that you have a curb or something here and then you see if you can fit them? Um, that, that was one thought that I initially had, but that I think was kind of before we were talking about the new parking spaces on the alley that are actually going to have people kind of coming in. Right, like right now, it's really just deliveries to you know the co-op and, and, and the businesses here that use that alley for the most part. Now we're talking about people parking in there. Um, you know, some of the garages are used, but they're pretty small. Um, well, so, these, so these six parking spaces that Gail would be putting here, they would be privately owned and service the this apartment building. And her, she can share the parking because she owns one of these buildings down here. Um, so it would probably be like employees. It would be a uh, probably shared parking lot, like employees during the day, and then people who live in the apartment building at night. The, yeah. They wouldn't be open to the general public. The, the kind of thought I had was kind of put some there. My, my other one was square off the uh, the Lang building, kind of all the way back to the alley. So instead of being kind of that triangle shape in the back there, it would actually be squared off. And then all your parking spaces would be just in a straight line, kind of along Clifton Park Road. And then that would somehow tie in with, you know, with the Crescent Road, Clifton Park. Yeah. Um, that we know needs to be done, and maybe the I mean, a sharper angle a little further in, you know, and kind of feed off of Clifton Park, and just kind of reworking that whole thing. And then that would give you know either the ability to make like maybe a little green space by by Langs where it kind of angles in, or maybe Langs gets that ability to, to do a little additional building if they want to someday or something like. That. Um, essentially, there's in my. I think, and, you know, we know there are a lot of movements here. There's just way too much pavement between Clifton Park, Crescent Road, and the alley. And somehow we need to reduce the amount of pavement there and, and kind of take care of some of those angles. So I think there are a few options we can look at, but they all need to be done as part of that study, I think. So what you are asking before with that, you know, uh, handicap space, I think you know, beyond the plans, maybe it's, you know, for future use if needed or something. But I'd like to see that tied into the larger study just to make sure that it, it works with it proposed yeah that makes sense to me bill i think um when it's hard for you to see this because you're on the phone but if you can actually mute your cell phone when someone else is speaking because there's background noise that's making jim cut out or at least for me i can't hear him that great <laughs> and i'm watching the noise buttons and it seems to be the number that's three seven which i think is you right is that clerk which one is that Wait, sub, which one? Wait, Carla, can you speak again? Yeah, it's me. Is it me? Oh, oh I can no, you. it's not you. My dog. Can three, seven. Okay. There seems to be some background noise that kind of pops in and pops out. If you can, that's you. It just makes me. Jim cuts out for me every time somebody's phone is making noise. Um, Same for me. Yeah. I, I agree. So that is one of the things that they're looking at. And I definitely think reducing the pavement and maybe like, I don't think the county is necessarily, you know, tied to these four spaces. I think they're just trying to provide additional spaces. But if we can figure out a reconfiguration that, you know, adds spaces and is helpful to everybody, you know, who lives and works in the area, that would be awesome and make it much safer. 
And Jim, you mentioned having uh, green space, green space built in um, for what you're thinking of as a plan, but it wouldn't hurt to have a couple bistro tables somewhere too. Now that the sidewalks aren't super wide for tables near the co-op. Yeah. I mean, I think there are a bunch of things we can do. Um, somehow look at being able to reduce the amount of pavement. I mean, you could even, again, it'd be a big change, but you could even look at having Lang's building come all the way out to the end of the existing parking spaces and kind of run up square. And that would take out a lot of that additional road and give them again, the ability to either, you know, either we could put a pocket park in there or they might be able to utilize that space, you know, for an addition, if, if we wanted to go that direction, you know, the four spaces there, I have a concern with, with traffic, but also look at where the, the handicap space is typically spaces would be what's called a hammerhead which is just a clear area that nobody parks in because the person coming out of that would back into that space to then get out and just mm -hmm. all the all the here along with clips of park being right there it's just it's, it's a little it's a little odd it would be nice to tie the sidewalk in around to those businesses because those businesses always seem to be left out you know like unless you know specifically that marie's tailoring is back there you don't really go there or you don't recognize that there's other businesses on that strip. So to continue the sidewalk around there, even would bring that out and then have the parking start at that little dotted line, would just sort of push all of that out and, and leave a little more buffer between the front of the businesses and then where the cars start would take up a ton of, of all of that dead space. And yeah, that sort of include them in the front facade, you know, and that I think would help them to feel like they're part of this whole strip, you know. Yeah, so like take this eight foot sidewalk and make it look continuous all along here so that you can access these doors here and it all looks like the same part of the same. Right. Yeah. 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 And I, mean, I think it's a great idea. I like it. Me too. Um, those, those things are all things that we can figure out with our engineers and then just coordinate with the county um, because obviously that is more on, on the town side. But. Um, are we ready to, since we're sort of talking about the Nut Street block, I mean, is there other items on that that we should briefly hit on here? Uh, I mean, I know Jim mentioned what he thought was a conflict that maybe I mean, cars coming and going in front of the co-op block, that they'd come out of the angled parking and then the, the second set of parking, angled parking in front of the co-op block, people would be going in there. And then uh, Jim also mentions you may have people on not trying to make a left turn into the angled parking spaces, and then you've got cars maybe coming out of Via Del Mar, and so uh, I don't know. It makes sense to me, and I don't know whether that's a concern that's already been passed to the county or something that we would want to convey to the county just so they are sure this is what they want to do with uh, auto movement uh, there. So... He's this conflicting movement right here we're talking about, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, I feel like even right now, like we, because it's still, a, it's actually, I know it's, um, I think it's still very early on in the process, right? So they had the different concepts and they've settled on a concept that they're going to work through, but now you can get into the engineering and be like, okay, yeah. So um, we can, I mean, we could send a list of things that we see or, you know, think that they should look at. Uh, right now, I think it would be fine. One yes, I, I mean, I see no harm in uh, Jim Levy's a traffic uh, expert, uh, and other people have observations. And so, at least his concerns, we should share them with the county. And then, uh, I mean, uh, also, I think uh, the in and out to the Sunoco gas station. Um, I mean, that's a, a thought on that. It could be the gas station people feel like we need a, as wide an area on Notch Street as we can because we park cars on the side there that are waiting to have auto work done or other things. And um, I mean, I don't know if they've seen this design or not. They might even squawk about the narrowing uh, that's there 
uh, already. So, um, I mean, I guess it would just be another item on the list that we might share with Paul Sheldon to say, are you sure you want to do this? And maybe even give the gas station folks a chance to speak up and articulate their concern. Um, but it's another item that was on Jim Levy's list that I think we ought at least to bring it to the attention of uh, Paul Sheldon so the county's aware. Yeah, just related to that, I did raise the idea that, you know, that could be narrowed further. And, and if we did narrow it, I mean, even if we just had a, you know, a right out there, and I'm not necessarily advocating um, just a right out, advocating for the ability to get in. But that would, if, if we did close off more of that, it would actually, in theory, give them more area to park cars that would be out of the way of the, the travel lane. Um, so, yeah, I mean, anytime we're talking about change, it's it's difficult and, and people have to consider what the impacts are. Um, but if, again, if we did close that off more, it would give them more area to store things that would be out of the way of, of actual flow of traffic on, the, on that site. Um, but, you know, it's okay. easy for me. I don't own the property. It's easy for me to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the county's been deferential to business owners if they articulate a concern that's going to be harmful to their being able to do business. I'm, I'm guessing the county legislators or others wouldn't listen to that. And uh, so we would need a probably an overriding safety concern if we wanted to ask for something that might make traffic movement on their site or other things uh, harder on them. So. Yeah, I, I do think we should, you know, really consider not allowing left turns off of, out of their property onto Knott Street right at that intersection. I just think that's yeah, yeah that's, I think that's, that's a, a good turn. idea. It's really close to the intersection. There are a lot of movements, and if someone wants to make a left to make a right on Ball Town, it's trying to cross all that. It's just you know, it's a tough one now. It's not. It's not going to go away. I think there are things we can do to improve that. Okay, so conflict of movements um, at the Via Del Mar and parking lot intersection. Um, just potential, like, traffic control out. And, uh, so yeah. further concerns that we have, I mean, we probably will just wait till this study is done. Is that right? And see what the engineering company recommends with traffic calming things for Via Del Mar and the whole neighborhood and then respond to those. So, Because yeah. we're going to be coming up with at least, you know, five or six different options, you know, with the understanding of what some of the impacts would be. I mean, nobody has a crystal ball, but you could, you know, hopefully figure it out, like, um, or do your best at figuring out what the unintended consequences are and, you know, what you're trying to solve. So, um, yeah, and then you, we would look at all the different recommendations and then, then I think maybe pick one that seems to make the most sense and then refine it. I think that would that's the idea of that. So, like, they'll come up with a variety of treatments for discouraging traffic on Via Del Mar and Almeria and Clifton Park. They'll come up with a variety of ways that we could probably reconfigure the parking on Clifton Park and Crescent and, you know, maybe on street and angled parking on the, the further part of Crescent. And then we just look at all those ideas and, and look at what the, the potential impacts would be and then say, okay, <laughs> uh, you know, on tree parking only on Clifton Park, you know, here's the treatment that's gonna make the most sense for VNMR and this is the parking configuration we like the best, but move these spaces like over there, something like that, I would think. Okay. Um, would, the, would it be possible to do, uh, I mean, I don't know, traffic movement simulation using the same technology that this comp that Creighton Manning used to look at Windsor Drive? I mean, if the town were interested in some possible, understanding some possible maneuvers that people would make if you did different things, um, would they be able to use that technology here? Or, um, and I know I, I sent a note, you know, are there any counts of traffic volume and speed that are on Via Del Mar and Clifton Park Road now that, um, you know, the town could look at or wh whatever company gets the quote well, that they could look at. Yeah, the town doesn't have the ability. Well, this new, those speed sign, the speed sign that we bought can do traffic counts, but um, we haven't had those little strips in a long time. So we don't have our own traffic counts on Via de Mar. The only way we'd be able to get them would be if we set up like a speeding sign on Via de Mar. Yeah. Um, and obviously, if you set it up now, we all understand 
we we're just talking about this, like there's not as many cars on it. So you're not getting a good traffic count yeah. if you set it up now. So we don't have a historical traffic count on Via Del Mar, but you definitely okay. could use the same type of um, data that they used for the Celts farm to look at kind of like which points of um, which intersections the car hits and you know, but when he was talking to the planning board about how he's evaluating that data, it's pretty expensive when you start adding additional intersections. So they were only looking at Windsor and Van Antwerp, uh, River GE traffic circle, and you know, that area of River Road, yeah. if they had to find it. So if we were like, okay, we want to see which cars are coming from, you know, Ball Town and not, and then get on and Almeria and Almeria and Cookham Park, and the more. Yeah. So anyway. I still think you can use the data, but I'm not sure exactly how it would apply to there because we have more intersections. Yeah. So, well, even well, if you didn't do that, uh, I was just wondering. Uh, you know, if the town board gets this study and they now have some options. They've got some traffic calming options to look at Via Del Mar, some other streets. Okay, they got options that you know. I'm if they had any data from before that were traffic counts uh, even on. Dean or Regent or Clifton Park Road or Via de Mar, they may not have it, even if they were historic, even if they went back five years or something, at least it would give you some idea of what the, the volumes are uh, to start with. So as the town board is looking at it, they can say, okay, here are the, the option, here's the traffic volume before the pandemic on these streets, Almeria, Via de Mar, Clifton Park Road, Valencia, Regent, Dean, um, and and then here are the options suggested so that they can look at options and they'd have the, the traffic counts as another data point. And, you know, they could make a recommendation or and then get some input from neighbors on their recommendation and, and go forward. So at least they're looking at data, uh, thinking about what the data means, making a recommendation that, you know, people can digest and uh, and offer some thoughts on, you know, before they go forward with whatever it is they decide. So <laughs> I just feel like some counts would be helpful if they're, if they exist anywhere. So, so I want to agree with Laura. Um, I mean, we could certainly look into doing counts, but if the town is looking to kind of keep the budget where it was, and I think if I read the article correctly, it's about $10,000 um, for the study. Uh, counts are going to, you know, counts are going to increase that by, I don't know, I think it's about $2,000 per count to location. So if we did five of them, it's going to double the cost of the traffic study. So, yeah. you know, stuff like that that we do, I, I mean, I can be looked at, but there's definitely going to be a cost associated with it. Um, yeah. Well, that's why I was kind of dropping back to if we have any historic counts, could we try to find those? I can't imagine there is. I mean, the counts would have been done if there was something done on that road or in a, you know, in a, in a, in a local or would have access but I can't imagine there's been a count in the last couple of years around there on, on any of the side streets. Right. Not unless the county did one. I mean, we can certainly ask the county what they did for um for their for their corridor study, but I'm not sure if they would have collected the count on Beautiful Mar, probably not. Yeah. So uh Paulina, you can certainly sign out and then call back in on your phone if you'd like. Um I think we are, I think if I can just summarize though, I mean, that's mostly just a discussion item because more stuff will come back to us, but for the time being, do we want to just send a note to the county um, saying just, can you make sure that you're looking at that conflict of movements? Um, there just seems to be a lot going on in that one intersection um, and the potential traffic control out of the gas station just because it's so close to the Balton Road intersection. Um, and then I think that it's worth saying it to them, just in case, but um, not sure if this is going to be, you know, probably more of a town, but the, con the, con the con continuity of the sidewalks along the Langs building, I think that that's definitely a point that we should raise. Maybe they can help, maybe they can't. I mean, I know this on the town side, but... Uh, can I ask on that one more time also on the sidewalk? I know it's supposed to be eight feet, so that's good. It's a wide sidewalk in front of the co-op plaza buildings. And I'm wondering, is there a, a lip from the parking area to the sidewalk that's, you know, three or four inches? Uh, and the, the former manager of the co-op said his recommendation was instead of having the 
the little bumpers to sort of stop cars from going up uh, and endangering pedestrians was just to have like a kind of a U-shaped metal bar that would come up and go down in front of each parking space so that um, people don't t- can get access to their cars uh, with a grocery cart or walking from the sidewalk to the trunk of their car to put the groceries in. But the, the U-shaped bar is just enough that it would stop a car from going up onto the sidewalk. Um, and the co-op said before with the rubber bumpers that people were tripping on them. So it was a trip hazard um, having those. And so one thought I would also like to ask you know, the county to consider is for those angled spaces in front of the sidewalk just to put uh, a looped kind of a up and down bar that would prevent a car from going up on the sidewalk. So that would just be another recommendation. Okay, we can ask him. I think that typically, you know, the the curve on the sidewalk essentially acts as like one of those little concrete barriers that you normally see at the end of the yeah. parking lot. I mean, those are typically only three or four inches high, and the curbing is typically like you know, five or six inches high. So. I, I yeah. don't know that they need to add anything in addition, but we can definitely talk to them about it. Okay, sure. Okay, any other uh, discussion on the Knott Street plan from anyone? Um, one thing I concern? noticed, one thing that I don't know if it's too minute to even talk about at this point, but I'll just throw it out there because you said that. The only bike, I don't know if bike racks are on here anywhere. I didn't see them. And I didn't see like sharrows like we've talked about in the past. But the only bike rack that I know of is behind the carts at the co-op. And it's mm-hmm. extremely challenging for me to park my bike there. And I usually park it on the cart return at the top right corner of the co-op parking lot. I don't think bikers should have to turn left into the co-op to park their bikes. So it would be nice to have more bike racks everywhere, I guess, is my with adequate space for the bikes, you know. Okay. The yeah, bikes, you can put them in the van. Yeah. People at Starbucks put the bike racks there, but your bike ends up on the side, you know, near Starbucks, it's on the sidewalk. It's like sensible bike racks would, would be nice. That's a, that's a really good point. Yeah, when I asked Paul Sheldon, uh, he, somebody asked him that. He said, well, the co-op, uh, you know, in their parking lot across the street, if they want to put a bike rack over there, uh, they're welcome to do so was his, was his return comment to me on bike racks. But I mean, I don't know. It's uh... Oh, well, bring it up again. It's really, really, I think okay. it makes a lot of sense to put them on the plan now with a kind of yeah. can understand like so that they're not sticking out into the sidewalk. Yeah. What were you going to say, David? I didn't know if the plan included any street furniture. So even if they were putting the plan and but they don't have the budget to buy it, it could be to be done by others or future placement just so if the co-op was to put a bike rack, they at least know where it should go. That's a good idea. Yeah. And would there be a bike rack down at the other end? I mean, I, is the island uh, in front of Langs? Is that a bike that's rack possibility? Or, or you yeah, know, is there thing, at the other end of the plaza, you know, any space there that we would recommend? Uh, matter of fact, the kind of space that, Jim Levy was mentioned as maybe a little pocket park rather than a pocket park or included in the parking pocket park. We might recommend uh, putting a bike rack there because we've kind of got space that we don't know what to use it for. So, Yeah, I I like David's idea. Like ask them to put the street furniture in, even if it's just bubbled out as not funded. Um, Sure that we can all get together and somehow find a way to buy bike racks if, you know, the county can. But it's just locating them and making sure that they make sense and they work in the streetscape, that's what. Right. We would be negligent as Complete Streets Committee if we didn't even push this a little bit, like where's the bike racks and uh, mm-hmm. make sure that there's at least some note or some inclusion of them in there. So I think it's good to forward that. Thank you, David Hogan. Um, okay, the next one is the Niskina School Reconfiguration Pedestrian Bicycles Traffic. Any, you want to lead us off on that, Laura, what you're looking for? Uh, sorry, I just left that on there. And actually, I don't really think we have any updates unless you guys know of any. Um, I haven't seen any new engineering plans or anything. I think I just want to make sure that we continually push when they're doing these, um, when they're figuring, you know, when they're bonding and everything, which we talked about earlier. 
that if they're going to be adding cars to the road, I think we have a long, uh, a good hard push to say, yeah, okay, this makes really, this makes good sense for you and your teachers. That's great. But you're adding more vehicles to our road. So you need to mitigate it somehow. Like you've got a bond to put some bike paths and some other things in there that would potentially draw some, draw some of the vehicle trips down. Yes. Tessa, Laura, did we ever get any response from what was sent to the district, the information that was sent there? I got a response from Brian and Rosemary that they wanted to continue to push for the bike pedestrian amenities. I'm just, I guess I'm not really 100% sure where they are in design and bonding and like what their next steps are. Tess, you're muted. Tess. You're muted, Tess. <laughs> oh, sorry about there that. We go. Um, I guess they have to get it approved by the voters first before moving forward with next steps. Oh, well, maybe like maybe Tess, if you and I just want to send a like, you know, Cos Cosmo and Brian and Rose. Oh, well. Brian and Rosemary for now, an email just saying, hey, we just want to make sure that we're not missing the right timing to make sure this is included in the bonding because it won't be designed, but we just want to make sure there's money in there for it. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's do that. And I also think if maybe, I mean, if the bond issue fails, um, it doesn't mean that the school couldn't think about doing some of the things that are there. I mean, uh, some bike path improvements on the campus or some of the other things that we've suggested. I mean, obviously, they can't go out and do work on town roads and county roads, but, you know, they still can do some bike path work or some other pedestrian connections, even on each school campus, which, um, you know, they may, I mean, they have landscaping and other work that's in their regular budget. And so they, they may not be able to do everything we suggested at once, but they might be able to do a couple of things. So, you know, even if the bond fails, it doesn't mean the things we've suggested necessarily go away. It means they could still look for money to try and do them, so. Yeah, I just think, and I, I say this to you guys all the time, that government and public schools move slow. So you probably wanna do one step at a, at a time, make sure that the money's in the budget now and then if the budget fails then work on the next step if, if yes. yeah it's just i know if you ask me for too many things at some point <laughs> i'm like okay so yeah so i think we'll just send an email just trying to just make sure that we're not missing a timeline that we don't know of okay yeah, Very good. yeah exactly I think that'd be good. And, and Bill, as you say, even if this bond goes down, the school still has some amount of improvements they're going to have to do over time with the buildings and things. And so we still need to keep in front of them, you know, with, you know, even if it's only a ten, only a $10 million upgrade instead of the or 80 they're talking about, it. if there's something going on on a campus, we want to stay in front of it and see if we can get things done, even if it's, you know, yeah. instead of all at once, like you said. And we talked about this before too, like if they target Birchwood for an upgrade because they can't do the whole one, then we can say, okay, if you guys build the sidewalk to here, we'll wrap this into our next year's budget to, you know, continue it on or whatever, and then prioritize what they're doing with what we can do so that it, you know, so that there's an overall improvement to an area, like that can certainly be like worked in as well. Yes. Okay. So should I... Um write an email, but then it can come from the committee. How will that work? Um, so who do you typically email? Do you just email everybody? I do. When they reached out to ask for Bill's summary, that came from the superintendent's secretary, and then I hand delivered it because um, I just had a physical copy. Um, so yeah, I could send it to everyone, including the superintendent and his secretary, or just the particular two who had interest. What do you recommend? Um, it's it's. I'm actually completely fine with either. I mean, I'm technically the sec the secretary for Complete Streets, so if you want me to send this one out, I don't mind doing that. I just think we should send it to the same people that we've been continuously talking to, and I don't have their email list, so um, 
Maybe okay. you and you know, I can just come up with a, a draft email, like send it out to the committee, make sure everybody's happy with it, and then we'll distribute it to the people that you normally send it to. Okay, that sounds good. And all their, um, at least their um, Board of Education emails are all online, and that's where I get that from. Okay. Okay. Um, then the uh, last thing, next to the last thing on our agenda is uh, the, uh, the the email uh, on our, uh, I guess, the complete streets map. And, uh, you know, Mark Storty did that for us. I, I mean, I still kind of want to print a big one and look at it in comparison to our the map that we have. Um, and Laura's thought was, well, um, we could do it as an email blast and, uh, you know, just sh share this map with people in the town that might want to use those pathways to move around their neighborhood or get to different places. And uh, I, I kind of had said to Mark, well, and I don't know if he did it or not, you know, one overlay would just be what's already completed so that, you know, you see this map, you can go. And then another one would have the, the proposed connections that we're working on um, ourselves, or I don't know, maybe uh, if we only have one, you could share <laughs> share the, uh, the big one that's got the proposed connections, and then people can uh, decide or make a decision. You know, when they get someplace and they say, "Oh, there's no real path here; it's just a proposed connection." But I don't know if that's a, a disservice to residents whether we would only want to offer a map of connections where you really can get through or you really can go from one place to the next. So, uh, and I know that we want to get it out if we're going to do that sooner rather than later, uh, although I'm guessing the pandemic's going to be with us for quite some time yet. So, um, I mean, I haven't had time to sit down and look at Mark's map and really make sure it's got everything on it or whatever before we release it. But, I guess we could just open it to the committee to see if they think it would be a good idea to make it available to town residents for their use, just as it is right now. So, so I'm just super grateful that the county would do that. I think it's really great that you reached out, Bill. Um, and it's really nicely done. I think if we can get the GIS files, that would be awesome, which I can ask him. There's just a, you know, there's just a couple things which I think is normal. Like he copied the map that we gave him and the map that we gave him didn't have Flower Hill built. So you can see like the bike path is not actually over top of Flower Hill, which you're talking about. So there's just some little things that we could tweak. I think overall you could still share it. We just know that there's some little things that we could tweak. Well, I think we ought to update it as much as we can so that something as important as Flower Hill that should be on the map that we release to the public and, and other connections that, you know, if they've already been done, we should update the map. And I guess that's homework that, uh, I don't know, maybe Clark and I can look at that or something like that and try yeah. to get the map as, as up to date as we can. And then ask the town board if they want to release it to citizens to look at. And, uh, yeah. Adopt and re-release. Because if you guys remember, the City of Schenectady has that really nice um, biking master plan. And they have Grand Boulevard identified as a major biking corridor. And we wanted to put, you know, a bike path on Grand Boulevard, um, a bike lane on Grand Boulevard, but it's not actually on our complete street map. <laughs> so that yeah. was like something that we had talked about, like rather, you know, rather than a B story so that we're connecting with the city's connecting. And if they build a bike lane, then we build a bike lane, that kind of thing. If their yeah. plan says we're funneling everybody to the town of Nisk unit at this point, and then we don't have any connections with the city of, Sn of Schenectady on our complete street. Yeah. That's, no. The one thing I was going to ask is, and I see it on the map right now, um, that blue line between um, Country Club and um, Ruffner. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, last time we published this map or got it out, that generated a lot of controversy. Um, I don't know if making it, a, sharing it without the um, town board approving it or formalizing it in some way is going to make our job harder to make these connections in the future. Or um, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know how everybody else feels, but I know that in particular that one and a couple other ones were real um, 
generators of comments. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was kind of thinking two two overlays. One that uh, we, the committee, would look at and say, okay, this is a connection that's in our mind, but we may not want to ask the town board to release all these to the public because we don't want to start a fire where there isn't one currently. Or, you know, like if the golf course decides to sell some property and you know, we get a chance to make a connection just as part of a, a new development that makes life easier for us and doesn't uh, trouble people. Um, I mean, that would be uh, part of, I think, you know, looking at an overlay and having it as updated as we can make it, but maybe, you know, on the one released to the public now that we would ask the town board to look at and say, are you okay releasing this to the public that we would take off some of the controversial things and, you know, just release one that works now and then have a second overlay that's got other proposed connections that we're still working on that would just be a working document for the committee or, you know, the planning board or whatever, so. Yeah, Bill, I think it's really important to at least have a document somewhere that has all the proposed um, yeah. connections, because you're right. I mean, opportunities come available, and if it's sort of identified, it's more likely to happen. Yeah, and just your point about Windsor Drive connection being on the town in the town master plan and on the town map for a while that, uh, you know, if we have a complete streets map with proposed connections and it's a connection that's been there for 15 years uh, or, or longer, then it doesn't look like we slapped it on 15 minutes before somebody turns in a proposal to the planning board or something that it's an idea that we've had and it's part of an overall connectivity map. So I guess my point is we just uh, if Mark Storty has digitized it, is it now possible for us to do corrections and additions fairly easily on our own, or uh, would we have to talk to Mark about how to do that? Or if he shares it with us, you know, can can Clark and I make changes on it um, before we go? Um, the county uses, um, I think they use ArcMap, and. You could probably edit it like in Google, maybe Google Earth as a KML file or something and then bring it back. But probably the easiest thing to do is to hand mark your changes and then bring them to either Mark or to me because I also have ArcGIS on my computer. It's a lot easier for okay. me to get, like align a road than build the whole entire map. <laughs> so he did a yeah. lot of work for us, which is really, really awesome. And I really appreciate it. If he just doesn't mind sending us, you know, the whole GIS kind of map with the legend and everything that would be really great oh i think he would i think as a matter of fact he would be grateful that we're going to use the work and if he's you know done 90 percent and it's electronically and then he shares that with us then we can make the updates on our own and print it and you know have it ready to go as a matter of fact it's good if we have that capability because then as we you know make changes or add things all we've got to do is update our current map and and put a new date, a new last revised date on it, and we'd have the most recently available. Even if the town board said to you, Laura, this map, um, print us the most current copy, would you please? It's got <laughs> what we can share with the public, and then maybe the second overlay of uh, different connections and proposals that Complete Streets has in mind that we want to see where we're going, it would be nice to have that capability where you could just do it. And I think that's part of our goal. And you know, if Mark's done 90% of the stuff to get us there, you know, taking it over from here would be fine, I think. And I'm happy to ask him to send it to us electronically. But that, that's great. Yeah, if you don't mind doing that, I think that's great. And getting this done was also really awesome. Okay. Uh, finally, on the last item, uh, I talked to Jim Levy about, you know, updating uh, Chapter 7, and we've all been busy with the pandemic, and then the school board, uh, I mean, our complete streets recommendations, the school board, the school board bonding, uh, you know, the Knott Street project and the Kelts property, uh, not that I have no excuse, but um, Jim Levy suggested that, uh, you know, we have a a master Excel spreadsheet that really has kind of got our ideas or any ideas about connectivity or changes to our plan that 
any member of the committee can recommend and we, we put it on the Excel spreadsheet so we don't lose our memory. Uh, and if we have new members coming and going on the committee or whatever that ideas we've had, we at least save them and, you know, we have them there to look at. But for chapter seven, we might want to cut it down to, I don't know, 20 priority things and they would be examples of connections that we'd be recommending and that we recast the chapter kind of generally supportive of pedestrian and bike access and, you know, write it up and, um, you know, we could include our larger complete streets map as a, a working document that would be part of that, an appendix to the master plan. And then maybe, uh, you know, an Excel spreadsheet with 20 our top priorities or whatever that would be part of the discussion of the chapter. And they wouldn't necessarily be ironclad. They would just be recommendations that are consistent with what we're talking about. And that, uh, you know, we'd push that to the town board and hope that they would update, you know, vote to update the town master plan with our revised chapter seven. So anyway, I haven't forgotten about it, but it's been a while since I've made any progress on it. So. No, I think that's great. I think those are really good excuses. I'm not, Concerned about it. I kind of just leave that on as a standing discussion item. I do that to tree council too, and it's okay. You guys can be like Laura, uh, but you know, I think that's a really good idea with the spreadsheet. So, okay. and, and that can just come, you know, as it comes, as well as the map. Like, we'll just be working on the greater things as we can, and then, you know, working through the planning board stuff that's coming through that's getting a lot of attention as well. Um, lastly, Laura, I did want to mention I, I saw that. Uh, Ro Rosemary Press Jaquith, Councilman Jaquith had put a note, uh, I guess a press release saying um, the town got 250000 as part of a municipal grant of some sort and 90 or 100000 of that's going to be used to repave the bike path from Riverdale uh, down to St. Joseph's and then St. Joseph's up to, the, up to the overpass by the Rexford Bridge, which I think is great news. And uh, I almost wish that she did a press release to the public so that, you know, the public would say, oh, wow, we're we got some money, which is a good thing. And here's how we're using it to repave sections of the bike path that have some cracks and stuff that you notice when you go over on your bike. But in her release, uh, at least the draft said that money is in here to do a crosswalk. And I wasn't sure whether that was at the Celts property, whether that's down at St. Joseph's. But it also mentioned the crosswalk at Knott and Regent, and then um, doing the the last two blocks of sidewalks on Knott Street that goes from Baker down to Lexington Parkway, and all of which I think are are great news. And if there's money, I mean, if that stuff's going to happen this summer, I just think that's kind of good news, and it should be shared with the public. And uh, I don't know. I, I guess my question is: It firm that those expenditures are all going to be made? Those projects are going to happen, and you know, if yeah. they are, can we let folks know? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Those actually have were identified probably like two years ago. I know that we look at a lot of things, um, but we're the ones that actually figured out where the crosswalk was going to be on that street and took a vote on that. And you might not have been at that meeting, Bill, but um, yeah. The only thing that may not actually be funded by the grant, and we t we talked about this, I think, when you were trying to get on the meeting, is that um, if the developer reconfigures the site, the crosswalk um, by Blattnick Park, then we would just take that grant funding with the permission of New York State and put it to a different crossing, I think. But this covers the crossing at St. Joseph, it covers the crossing on Knott Street, and it covers the um, Niski Una side of the, of the sidewalk on Knott. The Niski Una side okay. is a really difficult side, uh, and we're hopeful that when we get to, you know, our, our the end of our uh, um, jurisdiction, that the city of, of Schenectady would just pick it up from there. The city of Schenectady side is yeah. pretty simple. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have any of them. Like well, the, actually, I, I think it's a straight shot. I mean, from Baker to Garner is one block in Niski Una, and it's pretty much, you know, there's a, a fire plug, I think, that has to be moved and maybe a light pole. But then from Garner down to Lexington is pretty much a straight right. shot in the city. There yeah. aren't any trees in the way, and it's There's pretty easy to do. 
Yeah, there's a couple telephone poles, but they're even close to the road. So I think that them, their side's very easy. Our side is very difficult. So if we can get our side done, I think that they're willing to pop in on their side. I tried to get the grant for their side as well as an, you know, an interjurisdictional grant, but it's yeah. not the way that that grant funding works. So that was, I wasn't able to do that. Actually, I've spoken to the mayor McCarthy a couple times on this, and he just says, "Look, if if we're only missing one block, I mean, I can just you know have the the city engineer fit that into some other paving we're doing somewhere, and just you know have the contractor go over and do that one block from Garner to Lexington." And so I think they'd be very amenable to to doing that. Their that way, we'd have a connection. Yeah, their engineer essentially said the same thing to me as well. So we just yeah. have to do our okay. side then I think that they're willing to finalize their side. Now, is the crosswalk at St. Joseph, is that going to be a push button crosswalk or just a crosswalk with a, a sign that there's a crosswalk here? Well, it's either, a, so like the one on Regent would probably be a push bu button. The one on St. Joseph would either be a push button or um, sensor, like they have an aqueduct. I guess the question okay. is, what's going to make the most sense there on aqueduct? There really aren't any other houses around. So the sensor makes a lot of sense because it's really just picking people up on the bike path and there isn't a lot of like interference. I don't know, like I have the engineers decide if St. Joseph makes the most sense to have a sensor, especially like when you're looking at where would you put the sensor sensing people on St. Joseph crossing, it, it, it'd be easier on the other side. So it's either a push button or a sensor rapid flashing beacon. Okay. So the one at the Celts property is going to be a push button and the one at St. Joseph's will either be a sensor or a push button. Right. And the Celt one, like okay. I said, if the development is far enough along that we feel comfortable that it will be done, then we could take that money and look at another crossing that we need. Okay. Oh, so the developer is not going to pay for the crosswalk going across river at the Celt's property. No, he is. Right. Or, or yes. Oh, he is? Okay. Yeah. So what money we thought about that we can use down at, say, St. Joseph or someplace else, right, for a crosswalk. Right. Except St. Joseph's okay. is already covered, but yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Anything else on our agenda that we need to talk about today? Well, Larry, you did say there could be a, um, a push button signal at Knotton Region. Is that right? Or some type of uh, pedestrian? Yeah, I think it has to be on not. I think it has to be. I, I, well, I agree. I was just making sure it's not just going to be, you know, paint on the road. That's fantastic. No, it's def they're all there's but funding and for all of them to be lights. Um, it's just a question of push button or sensor. But on Notch Street, I don't think you could use a sensor. I think on Notch Street, it'll have to look more similar to like a Union Street, where it's a push button with the blinking up and down blinking. It's a little bit less than the like pop 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 of on Aqueduct Road. Right, <laughs> people push that can't accidentally go off. You know, something goes by. Right. Me, but no, that's that's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, I, I do think, that, I mean, uh, it depends on it. I mean, if it's a push button and, and motorists know it, then they know somebody's pushed the button. And so there is somebody that wants to cross. And so if the light's blinking or whatever, I know I need to stop. Sometimes with the sensors, I mean, I don't know if like Flower Hill or other places that, you know, the sensor is just on regularly and you don't see somebody trying to cross. And so it gives in to a temptation by the motorist to, you know, not slow down or not be as careful as they could be because there may be some blinking, but there's no bike or no pedestrian. And uh, I, I guess with the push button, um, you know that there presumably is somebody there that wants to go across. And so it's, I need to stop. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm being naive about that. No, that's true. And we're changing the flower hill to a push button. It's a long process, but I have an engineering firm right now looking at what it takes to re-engineer that thing to have a push button. Okay. Great. Okay, well, uh, Laura, anything else? Otherwise, we need to thank everyone for <laughs> doing their homework and attending the meeting and, and chipping in. And um, I guess um, unless someone has something else, we we could entertain, entertain a, a motion to adjourn and have a have a happy weekend. So, I'll, I'll move that. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thanks David, everyone for coming. Yeah, What's a motion that? and.
I think I got a second from David. Oh, 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 okay. Bill motioned and David second. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Laura. Thank you. Bye.